Okay, real quick, let's get this out of the way first. I know this movie was very well received and calling it underrated is kind of clickbait, but I don't see it mentioned nearly enough when I think it's easily one of the best films I saw all of last year. It also got absolutely ass blasted by the Oscars, so I think the title is fitting. All right, the review. Red Rocket is the seventh feature film by American indie auteur Sean Baker. I won't say too much about the plot because one of the most entertaining aspects of its opening 30 minutes is how information is slowly unraveled to the audience about who the main character is and how exactly he ended up where he is. I'll just say that it's about a self-destructive protagonist who insistently creates problems for himself a la Uncut Gems if it was set in a Texas slum. First off, in terms of presentation, this is a gripping production, where Sean Baker's last film, The Florida Project, took a Malick kind of approach to portraying a similar environment. Red Rocket's influences are steeped in the Americana of the 70s. As much is evidenced by the wealth of zoom-ins, whip pans, new wave framing and editing techniques, and 16mm. The seamlessly naturalistic dialogue rounds out the package and gives Baker's film a real kinetic energy that I find sorely lacking from most of A24's recent output. Oh, and I have to talk a bit about the set dressing. Every single rundown house, car, road, shop, and yard is loaded with meticulous detail to make each environment feel as real and lived in as possible. There is no question about the film's authenticity, and its willfulness to play with fantasy and style ensures that it won't just be a neorealist dirge. Its humor and playful demeanor expressed in both the performances and the versatile editing help propel the drama along at a brisk pace. Okay, all right. Right. production value out of the way, it's spoiler time. Go watch and come back, it's a good time, no alcohol required. For the first hour or so, Mikey is portrayed as a generally decent person. He does what's asked of him, he's a hard worker, he's a bit of a slacker and also kind of dumb, but not a bad person. Seems like the kind of guy you wouldn't mind having a beer with. While everything he does is transparently motivated by selfishness, it only seems to improve the lives of everyone around him, so we give him a pass. Simon Rex also plays the character with so much ease and infectious energy that it's hard not to be charmed by him. Then we get thrown a curveball. Mikey gets swept off his feet by a 17 year old girl who he sees at a donut shop and exhibits no reservation in crossing every imaginable line with her. This is the first time we see his selfishness take a dark turn. As the plot moves forward, Baker switches gears and gradually we see why Mikey is in the situation that he's always in. He's a narcissist. He has no empathy for anyone else and uses them to get what he wants. And what he wants are typically very dull, immediate satisfactions with no regard for his future prospects. His dream of taking Strawberry to LA is pure fantasy and it's obvious by the end that he'll never achieve it or that if somehow he does succeed, it'll ultimately all come crumbling down and he'll end up right back where he started. It's like that. Can you get off the property, please? What, 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 why? What are you gonna fucking do? Really? What, you're you gonna, want, it's, oh, really, you want me to call the act... cops? I'll call the cops. No, don't, don't no I'm calling the cops. Damn. I find it interesting how much history Baker affords his characters and how realized all of it is. By skimming the surface of certain details, he leaves just enough to the imagination for the audience to flesh out everyone on their own time. Put these characters in any context and we should be able to figure out what they do just as well as the screenwriter, a mark of excellent character writing. The rest of the cast gets plenty of room to shine as well, especially Brie Elwood's equally self-destructive, albeit in a more subtle matter, Lexi Davies. I find her inner conflict of wanting to indulge in Mikey's charm while understanding where it leads the second most compelling of the entire film. The most engaging scenes are the ones where the two play off of each other. I also want to shine a light on the character of Lonnie. I find it quite ironic that he's the movie's punching bag when he's easily the most virtuous member of the cast. His inclusion demonstrates that any ounce of virtue or empathy rips people in this environment to shreds and it's exemplified by how Lonnie fails to take agency in his life or stand up for himself. For someone who is essentially a throwaway side character, I find it remarkable how Baker utilizes him to mine more depth out of the story's theme. The film's strongest scene I find to be its climactic third act confrontation. By this point, we're not even sure if we should be rooting for Mikey, given the more fucked up things that he's done. We certainly can't root for Lexi, however, since while Mikey was certainly using her the whole time, she was using him just as much. It makes for a morally difficult final stretch, which challenges the audience's perception of the characters based on everything that we've seen. A really fantastic way to wrap out Mikey and Lexi's central conflict. Now, while I do love this movie, and I consider it A24's best release of the decade so far, I would be remiss not to bring up some minor issues that I do have with it. Speaking of minor, while I have no issue with the presentation of the morally hazardous relationship between Mikey and Strawberry, as its point is to expose Mikey's moral shortcomings, I do have an issue with Strawberry as a character. Compared to Mikey and Lexi, I find her incredibly shallow and much less interesting. Baker teases how a neglectful relationship with her mother, as well as living in a fatherless home, is perhaps the catalyst of her interest in older men. Though these things don't amount to much other than an overly sexually promiscuous teenager. I get that Baker wants Mikey's attraction to her to be totally superficial, but that doesn't mean that the character actually has to be 
totally superficial. There's very little conflict in her scenes with Mikey, and to me, they only seem to exist to degrade Mikey's moral character. Giving her a bit more agency and perhaps a little more resistance to Mikey's grooming might have helped out. Or, even better, possibly flipping her character so that she uses Mikey just like Lexi does. This leads to another issue I have, which is the ending. If you've seen The Florida Project, Red Rocket has the exact same issue. Baker throws in a fantasy resolution that unrealistically gives the main character hope without actually resolving any of their problems. And once again, just like The Florida Project, it is not an entirely earned or satisfying way to wrap things up. The ending I would have preferred would be Mikey winding up on the exact same bus that he came in on, bringing everything full circle. Which would have been predictable, sure, but not unsatisfying. Either way, I do get the essence of what Baker is saying, and so much else has been aptly wrapped up that I don't mind such a small blunder in the grand scheme of things. Easily one of the best films I saw from last year, and one that should get talked about way more. On a technical level, this is some of the most virtuosic lo-fi filmmaking I've seen from an American movie in quite some time. Like all of Baker's works, this has the stamina and snappiness of a debut feature. Seriously, the guy is pushing 50, and he's still making movies like he's in his 20s. The soundtrack is killer, the performances across the board are excellent, and the script isn't afraid to shy away from some morally challenging themes and characters. This is the kind of movie that I'd like to see more of right now. Stuff with bite, stuff with energy, stuff that's relevant to our current day and age. Movies like this should be fueling the industry, not getting tossed aside during award season, and barely receiving a limited release. It annoys me that the only place you can watch this right now is on Showtime, but maybe it'll get a Netflix release or something next year. I don't know. Fuck it. Zero out of ten. No minions. Bye. bye, bye, bye. bye, bye.